The first part of the job is done and he managed actually to get more votes at the National Assembly than the former Prime Minister, 306 votes in favour of the new government. Uh, that's to compare with 302 for the previous government of Jean-Marc Ayrault. And this is something we're going to discuss with uh, our next uh, guest, Bruno Jambard, Head of Political Studies at Opinion Way. Is it surprising that Manuel Valls, in the end, got more votes than Jean-Marc Ayrault, who was appointed just after the presidential election? Well, it's a good result for the new prime minister because, uh, as we know, he's uh, someone who's seen uh, much more on the right of the Socialist Party and there was some uh, uh, concern for him about the fact that some people of the uh, left of the Socialist Party and, uh, of the, uh, and in the parliament would, wouldn't vote for him. There was also the concern about the Green Party MPs uh, and they vote in majority for him. So, uh, so uh, yes, it, it, it's, a, it's a bit surprised to see that uh, so many people supported him uh, yesterday. Manuel Valls is a reformist. Does it mean that French people are ready to take some important reforms? Well, it's always difficult to say in this country because it's not the first time where a, a, a prime minister says he's going to reform the country. But it's clear that Manuel Valls is clearly on this side. Uh, for me, the, the real uh, uh, question is uh, how much the president will be able to follow his prime minister to reform the country. Uh, the, the only maybe uh, weakness of Manuel Valls in, in this uh, way of reforming the country is the fact that maybe François Hollande, the president, will stop some reforms sometimes because it will be uh, uh, concerned about the uh, demonstrations or about the opposition against them. It feels like it's a significant U-turn compared to the former Prime Minister. Manuel Valls has announced some tax reduction to boost the economic recovery. Do you really think that it's a U-turn or it's just a bit of communication? I think it's both. Uh, it's clear that the, uh, uh, the, 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 the line of the, po of the policy uh, that will be followed will be the same than before because the president said there will be a, a, a following of the, uh, of the action of the government. But it's clearly also a, a different tone, a different way to explain it, to, to, tell, to talk about it. And that's a, a, a real important turn. I think also it seems that uh, they're going to accelerate the reforms. And uh, that's also a big change comparing to the uh, former uh, uh, government. Manuel Valls, the, the new prime minister, also made some comments against the European Central Bank. He's blaming the, the ECB for being partly responsible of the weak uh, economic recovery. Why do you think such a comment? Is it to please the crowd in France, to blame the ECB, or does he really think that we need to discuss the role of the ECB? I think it's a, it's a way to make pressure on the European uh, Commission uh, if they want uh, if they want the Commission to accept a new delay, for example, for the uh, reduction of the, of the French deficit. And I think also uh, we have to remember that in uh, now more th uh, less than two months we'll have a, a European Parliament election in the, in the country, as in every uh, European country. And I think that uh, uh, the socialists are divided on this issue, and uh, it's clearly a way for Manuel Valls to, uh, to uh, try to give a boost to the Socialist Party in this election. Thank you very much, Bruno Jambard. Thank you for being with us live in front of the French National Assembly. Ross, I send it back to you on these comments from the Prime Minister yesterday who wants to discuss uh, the role of the European Central Bank. That was a bit surprising coming from Manuel Valls. Or, or maybe not. Stefan, for now, thank you. Um, Yannick. They want to discuss the role of the ECB. Well, I mean, in, in France, I mean, whatever it's Arnaud Montebourg or whatever it's uh, any other politician, it's very easy to blame uh, uh, ECB or the EU Commission for any uh, French uh, problem, which are mainly domestic problems, which, uh, which are, in fact, the lack of uh, structural reform and of fiscal consolidation. So I, there's nothing new there. Coming from Emmanuel Vanel Valls, yes, it is new, but you know, people uh, going to power usually l tend to uh, mm. blame uh, Europe for uh, domestic problems. Um, still, French demand or paper for French demand for French paper, if I can put it like that, pretty healthy. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, uh, the, the, the main takeaway from uh, from the speech yesterday is the fact that there will be a, uh, there will be a tax cut, and it will be financed by uh, some uh, some other cut in terms of budget. But it's, it's it seems right, cutting corporation tax, cutting yes. payroll tax. Yeah, but all in all, there will be uh, the announced slightly more uh, tax cut than what it was expected. And in fact, it's very vague on the 50 billion saving between 2015 and 2017. It's still very vague how they will be able to achieve it. So the main consequences is that 
it is today very unlikely uh, for France to reach a 3% uh, deficit mm -hmm. target for 2015. So we will have some very, very difficult uh, negotiation with the EU Commission. Uh, we know that Michel Sapin, the new finance minister, went to Berlin. The conversation were polite, but it was, uh, there were no agreement with Germany. We had the Dutch finance minister, we had the head of the Bundesbank uh, saying this week that it will be very difficult okay. to get uh, this renegotiated. Janet, good to see you. Thanks very much indeed for that. What has happened to the British trade deficit?